As mentioned in the previous video, this mount will be mostly in the mail episodes because I just have a bunch of stuff from China and I gotta show it to you before it's got before it gets used in uh, other projects. So same as before, I tried grouping similar items in this episode. So let's get started on another in the mail. The first item are these uh, 10 turn 10 kilo ohm potentiometers. They're supposed to be uh, burns but you can't really think these are actually original Borns potentiometers because, well, they were too cheap, including shipping. I paid something like uh, $3.50 for these two. But anyway, they are good enough even as clones and you've seen me use these before in the adjustable uh, bench power supply project. They work great for these kind of uh, projects where you want finer adjustment. So they're nice to keep around. Uh, myself, I needed an extra two for an upcoming dummy load project. I know some of you have been waiting on that project, but I was missing some key parts like these uh, potentiometers that prevented me from um, building that project. Next, let's take a look at some related items. I have this set of uh, plastic knobs. They come in uh, different colors. They are very cheap and they accept a 6mm shaft which is kind of standard across uh, potentiometers so you'll be able to use this in a lot of projects knobs come in so many styles that you'll have to find out whichever you like most and sometimes you also have to take into consideration the actual space you have available on your front panel and that's why my next item is also a set of knobs but these ones are a bit different if, if you remember I use this kind of uh, knobs on the um, power supply project. Here is a picture of that uh, power supply I built. And if you haven't seen that video, there will be a link on screen so you can click and watch it. There are 10 pieces in this set. They are 16 millimeters in diameter, but um, they also feature the same six millimeter uh, diameter shaft hole. These feel a bit nicer than the previous ones. They kind of have this uh, vintage aspect. And uh, they will give you a more premium feel for double the cost. A whopping $2 with free shipping. So I don't know about you, but I think these are a pretty good deal and some useful items to keep in the lab for upcoming projects. As always, links for these will be in the description below. Next item is also related and you've seen me use this one before. It's a three pole four position switch and uh, I used it on my current source standard project and here is a picture with uh, that project. If you haven't seen that video there will be a link on screen so you can click and watch it. There it was used to switch the range of the output. It's a nice switch, it's cheap so I decided to get another one just in case I ever needed one. I don't want to wait uh, over a month for a new one to arrive from China, so it's a small investment and I'll have it available whenever I need it. It also comes with this uh, plastic knob so you can uh, easily rotate the shaft, but you can replace that um, easily uh, with your own taste of knob considering the previous two products that I've shown. Our next item, is this set of five pieces momentary push button switches. Unfortunately, as you can see, they are all yellow and I was expecting something else because the picture uh, showed the five pieces in different colors. But that's something that happens from time to time with these uh, eBay purchases. So as I mentioned, these are momentary switches, meaning they will only make contact while you keep them pressed. Once you release it, the contact is released. This might be something you need in your circuit. For example, you could use something like this for setting the current limit on a power supply by shortening the output momentarily. Or there are other use case scenarios as well. They are rated for 3 amps, 125 volts AC. So I would avoid using these on mains voltages even if you are on uh, 110 volts. They just don't feel safe enough for that, that kind of usage. What's nice about them is the fact they have this um, round shaft for mounting which will only require drilling a round hole in your front panel and that's easy to do compared to 
mounting let's say a rectangular rocker switch that will require a bit more effort into creating that rectangular slot in your front panel. Also make sure you read the description of the item when purchasing these as they might come in both normally open and normally closed variants. Links will be in the description below. Next I have yet another type of uh, switch but this time it's a locking type switch meaning you press it and it stays locked. It's a normally open type so when you push it it will make connection and stay that way until next press. This one seems to be mostly plastic uh, with the same kind of uh, round shaft for mounting which uh, will make it easy to uh, mount you just have to drill a hole but this one seems to have a slightly thicker shaft and according to the specs will require a 12 millimeter hole for mounting. It's rated for 3 amps 250 volts and it just feels a bit safer to use it on the mains voltage than the previous ones because just it's a little bit larger in size and it's all plastic. Being a locking type switch you could use one of these for turning the output of a power supply on or off. So I will put a link to these in the description as well. Next we're going to look at a special type of switch. It's called a thermal switch or thermal cutout and it's basically a switch that will close or open depending on temperature. This is very useful for control or safety reasons. For example these switches are sometimes used uh, for safety reasons in equipment where you want to cut off power in the event of overheating or they can also be used to turn on a fan for example when the temperature of the heatsink rises above a certain point. They come in different shapes, sizes and ratings. For example I have these uh, four different types here. First let's take a look at these uh, two metallic ones. As we can see they are rated for 250 volts and 5 amps and their switching temperature is 70 and 90 degrees Celsius. But as I said, you can get these rated for any temperature you like. In fact, I noticed most eBay listings let you select the temperature and the type of switch. These ones have a metallic package and the data sheet says the metallic package is connected to the switch terminals. So that's why they ship these with a small silicone insulating tube. And you must consider this when attaching them to a certain part of your circuit like a heatsink because the heatsink might be tied to a certain potential and you might cause a short circuit. Curiously I've tested these with a continuity tester and one of the switches shows a connection between the case and the switch terminals while the other one doesn't. So I don't know why they're different in that aspect but they're both normally closed switch switches. They differ just by the temperature rating. Next I have this set of 5 which are also metallic but these are rated for 45 degrees Celsius and are normally open which makes them ideal for turning on a cooling fan once the temperature of a device reaches a threshold. In this case 45 degrees Celsius seemed like a good choice because I imagine I will be losing another 5 degrees on the thermal resistance between this switch and the heatsink then between the heatsink and the package of a transistor for example I might be losing another 5 degrees and if I'm also losing 5 degrees from the case of the transistor to the junction temperature this brings us to a junction temperature of 60 degrees when the fan will turn on and that could get worse in practice depending on how everything is connected on the heatsink. Next I have a set of 10 pieces this time with plastic package so you don't have to worry about shorting anything in your circuit with these. They have the same specs as the previous ones except for the outer plastic package. And I got these rated for 50 degrees Celsius and they are normally closed. So you would rather use these for opening a circuit thus offering protection in case of overheat. Another model that I have here it's a slightly bigger. Uh, it's called KSD301. This one is rated for 10 amps 250 volts. So it's the kind of switch you would use for something uh, of higher power like for a small 2000 watts electric oven to protect it for, to protect it, uh, for example from overheating. This one although it has a metal outer jacket the switch terminals are isolated from the um, actual metal jacket. So it's safe to connect the outer package to anything. This one is also normally closed and as I mentioned these are fine for pro protecting something 
by disconnecting but I need normally open ones for turning on a fan when the target temperature is reached so I will use the normally open ones for my power supply and the dummy load project you need to make sure you are ordering the right ones according to your needs and the link I placed in the description will show both normally opened and normally closed uh, in a search result so you just have to pick the one you need and now that we're done with the switches let's move on to some connectors I have this set of five pieces binding post connectors different colors but unfortunately I wasn't paying enough attention when I ordered this let me show you why I was attracted by their slim uh, profile because when doing projects that have a small compact uh, enclosure or front panel you just can't use those big chunky 4mm sockets they just don't fit well in tight spaces and then they don't look very nice sticking out that much from a small enclosure however I didn't notice these are 2mm sockets and I don't use 2mm banana jacks in my labs so this these will go into my box of connectors and they will probably never get used you can still find slim 4mm banana sockets but they don't look as nice as these with their small colored uh, plastic rings. Next I have a pair of these 4mm binding posts. They are not the regular ones but as you can see they are better built beefier versions. Although they have 4mm sockets the shaft is M5 thread thus is capable of carrying higher currents up to 24 amps according to the eBay listing. And they look more professional overall so I think I'm going to use these in my upcoming dummy load project I don't think I will go over 10 amps with that dummy load but these just look nice so I highly recommend you get yourself a set of these for your next project you will be impressed with the quality of these I have the small three and a half millimeter four pole audio jack not much I can say about these I needed a four pole jack and I wanted it to be slim and I found this particular model on eBay it's got a metal jacket and the gold finish on the jacket itself it just seemed nicer than the others I don't like the uh, big chunky ones or the ones that are labeled Sennheiser just for fun there will be a link for this in the description below if you happen to need one these are X-Age type with uh, 2.5 mm pin spacing and locking mechanism as well you often find these uh, types of connectors on PCB modules from China for example here is this uh, dummy load and it has a connection a socket for this uh, two and a half millimeter uh, JST connector but it didn't came with this uh, small cable with connector you can also use them in your own projects for a quick and reliable way of connecting something to a board and at just one dollar and fifty cents for a set of ten pieces you can't go wrong and it's better to have them in your box of connectors instead of waiting over a month for delivery and finally our last item in today's episode 24AWG connection wire I got both red and blue each pack 10 meters in length and these are supposed to be UL1007 rated meaning 300 volts and up to 80 degrees Celsius not to be confused with silicon wire that can withstand a much higher temperature this is just for your typical hookup wire it's good for small projects where you're not passing a lot of current or the working temperature is not that high also this is not as flexible as uh, silicon wire would be but as I said good for small projects not for making test leads a set of 10 meters will cost you $1.50 with free shipping so quite affordable coming from China or you could strip some alarm wire that you get locally for something similar that you can get out of that but I'm done doing that it's not worth the effort when you can get this stuff so cheap nowadays that was all for today I hope you enjoy watching this kind of content because there should be more coming your way as always I ask you to like this video subscribe to my channel and I will see you next time